very good evening to all of you. We want to welcome you to Golden State Baptist College commencement service. In your program, page number 18, let's sing together a great hymn of the faith. Guide me, O oh, the great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Let's sing it together like a mighty crusade choir. Guide me, O oh, the great to welcome you all to the 24th commencement exercise here for Golden State Baptist College tonight. What a beautiful night for a commencement exercise. We're so honored to have each and every one of you in attendance this evening. And uh, on behalf of the students, thank you to the parents, the pastors, all the youth pastors and assistant pastors, all those who've invested in the lives of these graduates tonight. I know we've got relatives and family, co-workers and employers here tonight. And uh, from our heart to yours, thank you for being in attendance. We welcome our online guest as well this evening. We're proud of our graduates. And tonight, we thank you for coming to Golden State Baptist College. Thank you for finishing. The Bible says, and it came to pass. We're thankful you came, and we th we're thankful that you've passed. Amen. Your lives are truly an inspiration to each and every one of us tonight as we consider all that you have endured as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Tonight, you are to be commended for your great accomplishments. And as you leave this place and enter the harvest field, our hearts go with you and our prayers go with you as well. We're praying that God would use you in a mighty way to reach the lost with the gospel message of Jesus Christ and see a world turn to the Lord. I would also like to take a moment to thank the faculty and staff of Golden State Baptist College. You have also invested in each and every one of the lives of these students. And tonight, I'm thankful for the great COVID restriction memories we've made together through this remarkable time. You're truly an amazing staff and faculty. I'd like to quickly thank deeply our pastor and pastor's wife, 46 years nearly of faithful, fruitful service here at North Valley Baptist Church and Golden State Baptist College. Pastor, thank you for having the vision for Golden State Baptist College. And we're so grateful every time you step foot on this campus, the life you bring to everything you touch is truly remarkable. We thank the Lord for your tremendous example. And the wonderful members of North Valley Baptist Church, thank you for supporting our pastor to begin Golden State Baptist College, this needed institution. Thank you for sustaining this ministry. And thank you even through COVID, 
the heavy financial blessings that you've given to see this ministry continue on. Our hearts are truly humbled, and we're grateful for your example. If this is going to be a wonderful evening together. It's not only the commencement exercise for Golden State Baptist College, but I'm reminded tonight it's also the midweek service for North Valley Baptist Church. And so I want to encourage everyone to be a part of the song service. It's okay to say amen during the preaching. This ministry is known for spirit-filled Bible preaching for which we are not ashamed. And so we're honored to uh, be a part of this service tonight, and I want to encourage you with that. We're going to ask Pastor Henderson to come at this time and lead us in a word of prayer to begin this service together. He's the pastor of the Harvest Baptist Church in Manhattan, Kansas, and he has two girls that have been a part of this college now, and we're so honored that Cherith is graduating tonight. Pastor, would you lead us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Father, we do love you, and Lord, we come before you tonight, uh, humbled once again by your goodness, your grace, and your mercies to us. Father, we thank you for the North Valley Baptist Church. Lord, we thank you for Golden State Baptist College. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Treber and the burden and the ministry and all that you've used uh, him to do. Lord, how you've worked through him and his wife and their wonderful family. God, we thank you for Brother Ox and uh, the ministry he has here in the college and all that he means to the students. Lord, we bless you for this opportunity to come tonight together, first to meet with you at church. Lord, we thank you for the church. We bless you, Lord, for the church. And God, I thank you for the privilege to be able to honor these graduates. Lord, we ask you to bless them. Continue to bless this college, bless the church, bless Pastor Treber. God, we thank you for providing financially through the years for these students and for the college. We thank you, Lord, for providing spiritually for these students the things that they've learned and gleaned, and not only in the classroom, but in the ministry here and through the preaching of your word by those that have faithfully stood behind the sacred desk and preached. God, thank you for providing uh, physically, emotionally. Uh, Lord, in all the various ways, we bless you for your provision. God, we thank you for the character that it took of these graduates to finish this year. Thank you for all that they've worked through the, during the COVID restrictions and the difficulties that have come their way. What a test of their character to uh, how they'll finish. Uh, Lord, hopefully we pray. Uh, in the battle with you till you come or Lord till you take us home we bless you for the character thank you Lord for the privilege again to meet together Lord we bless you tonight we praise you we honor you we extol you Lord we look to you we lift you high and Lord I ask you to meet with us tonight may you be magnified may you manifest your presence among us in Jesus name we ask and pray these things amen seated
Amen. That's wonderful. I want to welcome you tonight to uh, this graduation exercise. Beautiful, special. I appreciate the man of God as you prayed tonight. I encouraged me, and then hearing you sing that great first song, watching the graduates come in, and a beautiful night if you're watching literally around the globe. It's a beautiful night in Santa Clara, California. A little sunny over here for a few more minutes, but it'll go down. And uh, thank you, mothers and dads, all of you that are here, grandparents, parents, uh, aunts and uncles, pastors. And, of course, tonight I want to say I admire the great North Valley Baptist Church. They have sustained the college when it needed 100,000, 300,000, 500,000, 600,000, 700,000, 800,000 in the last 14 months when we're shut down, and they rose to the challenge. We don't have a rich church, but we have a very giving, giving church. And to the members of North Valley, I want to say thank you. For our friends that are here, it's day number 425. 14 and a half months ago, they said you can't meet inside. And uh, I want you to know something about the church and these students and our children at the other property with the school. They've just learned to conquer it. Whatever it is, you have to deal with it. And there's been no complaints. There's no been no complaining. There's been no murmuring. We put up with the planes. We know which ones are the loud ones. And quite frankly, Wednesday night is much louder than on Sunday morning and Sunday night. But we just sort of deal with it. And uh, I'm just so very grateful. COVID's affected the world. Our missionaries, most of them are still not able to meet in the world, in various countries of the world. But this area, the governmental overreach, and I know I'm being monitored right now. We always are. But the governmental overreach has been way out of bounds. To keep a church in a country where our Constitution says no law out of their church for 425 days. But we claim Exodus 14, 14, our Lord is going to fight this battle for us. Now, we may have to go to the next one, Jericho, and fight, and AI, but we've given this to God, and we've seen great victories won. You know, last spring, 2020, in March, when we stood in that auditorium, our youth pastor preached. It happened to be, we didn't realize it, the closing message. And we had to, after chapel, we were told, to, had to shut the school down. And the school was shut down last spring. Uh, these students were all affected. They had to go home. Eventually, they had to go to a computer and watch their professors and faculty members teach, take tests online, quizzes online, had to write papers, send them in to us. It wasn't easy for the students, and it wasn't easy for the faculty. They did that all last spring. Most Bible colleges in America were able to open up September of last year 2020 once again our county said no and so we are on now second semester second time around students stayed home and uh, went online and then this semester when these students came back in january the rules were this you cannot eat outside you cannot eat inside the dining hall and so you have to get your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner in a box and go back to your desk in your dorm and eat your meal. You know, in the midst of all that, not one complaint. Two weeks into the shutdown in the new semester this year, one night I wasn't asleep and I got thinking of these students. We've got to figure out ways that they can have more time to talk to one another. We were teaching classes out in the tent. We still have chapel out in the tents. Inside, we can go inside now, teach with masks on and students with masks. But as I was praying and thinking that night in the, the late night hour, I got thinking, these kids have been here two weeks. Nobody's asked about dating. They were not allowed to date. They could not even sit outside and talk. And again, not one complaint. That's just an amazing thing. I want you to know that these students, these graduates, the student body, the administration, the faculty, the pastors, the parents, the great members of North Valley Baptist Church have warred a good fight. 
My Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And graduates, you have been great soldiers in boot camp. No one went AWOL. You're not missing in action. You didn't go home to mama. And I'm just so very extremely proud of all of you. Tonight I want to take a moment this evening and we'll recognize different ones, but the senior pastors, our ushers are ready to come and see you. There are senior pastors that are here, whether you have a student in the college or not, or a senior missionary. You're not talking, I'm not talking about the assistant pastor, but the missionary and the pastors. Throughout the house, you're everywhere. This is what we call our church house. Will you stand up, all the pastors and the missionary full-time men? If you'll stand to your feet real quickly, all over the house, yes, yes, yes. Wow, this is incredible. Look at that. Everywhere. Praise the Lord. Remain standing till you have something that comes your way in just a moment. What an I'm giving my big hand. That's an amazing crowd. Everywhere. To God be the glory. We're still standing in tent one and over here in this tent. We'll have an usher come here and we'll get this over here. Brother Swanson from Illinois, we appreciate you. Is there an usher on that one right over there? We'll take care of that. And real quickly, we're going to find somebody. Um, one of you, you got it? Okay, good. Well, I don't think so, but we'll, we'll take care of it. I want to recognize the pastors that's in your program that support the college on a monthly basis. You know, no university or college in America can make it on tuition. That includes Harvard, Yale, Princeton, you name the school, Stanford. Tuition doesn't pay for it. They depend upon folks that will give large amounts of money and some that will give small. We have many pastors that are in the program tonight listed that you give to this college on a monthly basis. And I'm just so very thankful for you. If you're one of our supporters, the ushers are coming real quickly. We want you to stand for those that name in the bulletin. Come quickly, ushers, run if you will. Move if you will. That's it. All the pastors that are monthly supporters, and I see many are standing there. And we want to say thank you so very, very, very much. And you're coming your way. That's great. Come quickly, ushers, please. And way in the back over here, we need some ushers. Brother Trent, we need ushers over here. And uh, that would be great. And maybe a faculty member can help them. Uh, today is Wednesday, fellas. God bless you. And that's wonderful. We're so thankful. Give them a big hand, if you will. And lastly, my opportunity to say thank you is to the President's Club. The President's Club was formed and formulated many, many years ago with people that would give a one-time gift of $1,200 or on a monthly basis, $100 a month, or however you choose to give it, but by the end of the year, you have given $1,200 to sustain the college. And uh, our best year was two years ago. We had 104, almost all of members of this church, but a few outside the church. Last year, during COVID, I asked you to stop giving. I felt like when we went into this shutdown, everybody in every church and every pastor was in financial survival mode. It's not that we didn't need your money, but I think God would reward that. It's an amazing thing. We launched the program for two weeks in our church in March, and we didn't have 104, but we have 145 this year that have become part of the President's Club. And ushers, are you prepared? Are you prepared? I want you to recognize all of our President Club members from last year and this year. Will you stand to your feet real quickly, if you will, all over the house? And I know there are many people. And we appreciate the fact that you are supporting this college and your prayers and your financial gifts. And you're such a blessing to us. Please remain standing until you receive this gift. And it's just a way for us to say thank you so, so very much to every household for all that you do. Give them a big hand, will you please, over here in this tent. There we go. You got it. Good. Over there. Great. And back over here, we have several coming. Ushers, you're doing a fine job now. You're doing great. I guess I never asked for hands or anything. I keep looking at this muffler thinking someone's raising their hand at me on that tra tractor tonight. Thank you so much for being part of the service tonight. We look forward to every part of these uh, presentations tonight.
Well, tonight we want to recognize some graduates. These awards were handed out in a special chapel service on Monday, and they are all displayed on the table over here to my right, your left, this evening. And the graduates will not come and receive those rewards personally. They'll pick those up later on. But we want them to stand as we recognize them for their accomplishment here at Golden State Baptist College. First of all, we have ministry leadership awards. And this year, those go to Hayden Brock, who is a nursing home director, and Jared May, who is also a nursing home director. Let's give him a hand. Jared is not able to be with us tonight. He has already graduated in December and is in ministry, and so we'll send him his award. We also have tonight, we want to recognize the Fanny Crosby Music Award. This award is given to the student who has demonstrated exceptional musical involvement while here at Golden State Baptist College. And this year, our Fanny Crosby Music Award goes to Miss Alyssa Brown. Thank you very much. We also tonight want to recognize the winner of the Ann Judson Soul Winning Award and the Curtis Hudson Evangelism Award. These awards are given to the young lady and young man who have won the most souls to Christ during their years at Golden State Baptist College. And this year, the Ann Judson Soul Winning Award goes to Ruth Ann Goddard and the Curtis Hudson Evangelism Award to Michael DeHaro. Thank you. We also want to recognize the winners of the Caroline Robertson Faithfulness Award and the Charles Spurgeon Ministry Award. These awards are given to the young lady and young man who have exemplified extraordinary ministry service during their years at Golden State Baptist College. Tonight, the Caroline Robertson Faithfulness Award goes to Mariah Lawman and the Charles Spurgeon Ministry Award to Michael DeHaro. And then finally this evening, we want to recognize the winners of the Chancellor's Awards. And these awards are given to the young lady and young man who best represent Golden State Baptist College with their outstanding testimonies and exemplary Christian lives. These young people are also our class speakers, and you will hear from them later this evening. For the ladies, the winner of the Chancellor's Award is Miss Lauren Smell. And for the men, Mr. Hayden Brock. Thank you very much. At this time, we would like to recognize our 2021 Academic Award recipients. First, we begin with cum laude, which means with honors. These students have earned a GPA of 3.50 to 3.69, which means that they have earned approximately one A for every B. They are wearing a bronze cord tonight, and when I call your name, if you can please stand, and we'll hold our applause until the end. April Bridgman, Alyssa Brown, Megan Gibson, Wyatt Henry, Kayla Keaton, Sol Santiago, and Brianna Shook. Let's give them a hand. Next, we have magna cum laude, which means with high honors. These students have a GPA of 3.70 to 3.84, which means they have earned approximately three A's for every B. They are wearing a silver cord, and when I call your name, if you can please stand, Tiffany George, Cherith Henderson, and Kathleen Spillman. Let's give them a hand. And then we have summa cum laude, which means with highest honors. These students have a GPA of 3.85 or higher, which means they've earned approximately six A's for every B. They are wearing a gold cord tonight. If I call you, when I call your name, if you can please stand. Heidi Bowman, Ruth Ann Sousley Goddard, Lauren Smell, and Bethany Wright. We can give them a hand.
Thank you. And lastly, we would like to honor and recognize this year's salutatorian and valedictorian. When I call your name, if you can please come forward to receive a cash award. The 2021 salutatorian is Ruth Ann Sousley Goddard. Let's give her a hand. And the 2021 valedictorian is Heidi Bowman. Now let's give these graduates one last round of applause. In a moment, the graduates will be receiving their diplomas. The front row has been reserved for our photographers. Family and friends, if you would like to come take a photograph of your graduate, you may make your way to the front. While the graduate is crossing the platform, you may take their photograph. Would the candidates for the Associate of Ministry degree please stand? Upon the recommendation of the faculty and administration of Golden State Baptist College, we confer upon you the degree of Associate of Ministry with all the rights and honors pertaining thereto. If you will come forward, as we call your name, we'll present your diplomas. Leah Nicole Jessup. Maria Patino. Brian Post. Would the candidates for the Bachelor of Ministry degree please stand? Upon the recommendation of the faculty and administration of Golden State Baptist College, we confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Ministry with all the rights and honors pertaining thereto. As I call your name, if you will come forward, we will present your diplomas. Heidi Jane Bowman. April Ann Bridgman. Hayden Brock. <laughs> Alyssa Claire Brown. <laughs> Madeline Irene Cast. Michael Timothy DeHaro. Elizabeth Faith Renee Fitro. Diana Laura Garcia. Tiffany Marie George. Megan Marie Gibson. Ruth Ann Sousley Goddard.
Judith Rebecca Gutierrez. Cherith Hope Henderson. Wyatt Allen Henry. Kayla Elizabeth Keaton. Mariah Grace Lalman. Anna Lemus. Sol Melanie Santiago Maldonado. Anna Elizabeth Morgan. Jacob Panas. Micah Caleb Pope. Sophia Lynn Sager. Brianna Lynn Shook. Lauren Patricia Smale. Sierra Joanne Snyder. Kathleen Spillman. Bethany Wright. Let's give one last round of applause to all of our graduates. Thank you. Our class speakers this evening have been chosen by the graduating class, the faculty, and the college administration. Ms. Lauren Smell is our female class speaker. Brother Hayden Brock is our male class speaker. They will speak at this time. Graduates of Golden State Baptist College, class of 2021, welcome to the starting line. I know graduation is supposed to be the celebration of the end of a thing, but for us, this is only the beginning. From here, you will be sent out to ministries across the country and around the globe, taking with you the tools, knowledge, and experience that Golden State has equipped you with to make a difference in the world. It's so hard to believe it's been four years. It felt like 10 at least, <laughs> maybe 15. For some of us, it has been. <laughs> No, but really, four years has flown by, and I have grown to love this place, and I know you have as well. Sometimes I wish we could stay forever, but the staff can only handle so much of us. <laughs> the truth is that Golden State is designed to be a launching pad, and this is the starting line. The theme of our freshman year was Philippians 3.14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
At that point in our lives, this was the mark. Graduation day, a cap and gown, a tassel, a diploma. It seemed so far away at the time, and we're already here. You worked hard, you persevered, you stayed, you hit the mark. So let me give you a new one. Paul said, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. My prayer for each and every one of us is that 40, 50, 60 years from now, we would find ourselves at the finish line together. Having stayed the course, having kept the faith, and having stayed true to what Golden State stands for. I know that I am surrounded by peers with the strength, the grit, and the determination it takes to finish well. And I'm so honored to stand by you today. So on behalf of the graduating class of 2021, to Pastor Treber and Mrs. Treber, thank you. We owe you a great debt that I cannot express in words. To the staff and faculty, you are our heroes and what we aspire to be. To the members of North Valley Baptist Church, thank you for your labor and your sacrifice. It has not been and will not be in vain. And to our family members, our friends, our prayer warriors, our supporters, you are the reason we stand here today. And personally, I would like to thank my parents for always pointing me to Christ and my mom for saying, I think God has something for you in California. <laughs> and finally, my fellow graduates, my classmates, my friends, congratulations, and I'll see you at the finish line. I wish that I could spend all day just naming every single person that has helped me along the way, but I know what it's like to sit through a speech where the speaker doesn't know when to stop, so I'll just mention a few. My prayer has always been, and Lord willing always will be, that God receives all the glory and I none. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail, and were it not for grace, my life would be so rotten and destroyed, so tattered and broken, so diseased and hell-bound. I can't help but thank my Savior for everything he's done for me. I would also like to thank my friends and family. God has blessed me so much with friends and family that, that love him and love me. I know that this is a great privilege that the majority of people don't have, and those that do have it tend to take it for granted or waste it. Thank you, staff and faculty of GSBC. I wish I could go back to that freshman, uh, Hayden Brock, and encourage him to take advantage of the great staff and faculty at Golden State Baptist College. Freshmen, sophomores, juniors, I implore you to talk to these men and women. Learn what they're all about. I'm truly thankful for men like Brother Oxendine, Brother Bircham, and Pastor Evertson. You men have helped me spiritually, academically, and personally. If there was one thing I could change about Golden State, I guess I wish Pastor Treber wasn't so gloomy all the time. <laughs> In case you haven't met, seen, or heard Pastor Treber, before today, that statement could not be further from the truth. I'm constantly trying to glean from Pastor Treber's spirit. It's unlike anything else. Just when you think, oh, this trial is unlike anything I've ever seen before, I hope Pastor can handle it and still lead his flock, he displays a trust in God that seems, un seems unwavering, and all while wearing the biggest smile that you've ever seen. The ministry is great. Whatever part of me wasn't excited about the ministry before I came to Bible college, it's contracted the Pastor Treber bug. The ministry is just around the corner. I can't wait to get started. Thank you so much for everything you do, Pastor Treber. Lastly, I'd like to thank my parents. My parents have always been in my corner. They're the most supportive parents anyone could ever ask for, and they're always trying to push me to do better. My mother is only satisfied with the best, in herself and in me. She's always pushing me to go that extra mile and put 110% into everything I do. I would say that it's unfair, but she does that every single day of her life. Thank you, Mom, for instilling in me a spirit of excellence. My dad is one of the hardest workers I've ever known. He didn't go to a Bible college for four years and earn a fancy degree, but he's lived the life of a servant, and I learned so much from him every moment that I'm around him. Thank you, Dad, for instilling in me a servant's heart. Seniors, we've come a long way since our first days on campus. I still remember looking everywhere with wide eyes and just knowing that everything was going to be amazing. This is going to be just like Bible camp, preaching every day, cafeteria food, 
bunk beds. Who doesn't love bunk beds? <laughs> Glow games in the gym and a great spirit from all the other students. This, I thought to myself, this is going to be smooth sailing. And then the first day of classes started. I remember walking into Mrs. Flint's English 103 class, and everything changed. Bible camp isn't supposed to have papers due every week. I have to find a job, and I can't go to every activity now. My roommate's alarm wake up everyone but himself. <laughs> Projects and midterms and finals and white glove, it, it all seems too much. Okay, I told myself. That wasn't too bad. I may have sweated it out just a little bit, but, you know, it wasn't too awful. There may have been a few all-nighters, but I got that paper finished. I just have seven more semesters to go. Looking back now, I wouldn't trade that for the world. Because of this place, fellow seniors, we have been pushed to not just coast on by. We have been shown the importance of having a personal walk with the Lord. We've been able to see firsthand the results of men who have stayed vigilant in the Lord's work. We have also been able to see those who have fallen by the wayside. Our class used to be a lot larger. And although many have left for good reasons, many have also just given up. We must remember that none of us are above falling by the wayside. All it can take is one decision to destroy everything we've been working towards. We must stay vigilant more than ever. I've had the great honor of serving as a class chaplain this last semester. And it was an answer to prayer. I love every chance I get to preach God's word. I would like to conclude by simply summing up the three messages I was able to preach over the last three months. And they were directed to seniors, but I think they can apply to everyone's life in some way. First, we must cross the threshold as Joshua did. Everything's about to change for many of us. And we need to have that same comfort Joshua had. That comfort being that the same God, his mentor Moses, followed will lead us in a way that we ought to go if we will just submit to him. Secondly, we need to be like Jeremiah and boldly proclaim God's word no matter the consequences. Jeremiah said that his words were in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Let's be on fire for God in his ministry. Let's not be casual about Christianity. And lastly, we need to gain a burden for souls. There are people who may go to hell because of our unwillingness to simply share what has been done in our lives. We need to view people in the same way that God does, as souls that will spend an eternity in one of two places. Seniors, we may have just graduated Bible college, but our work is just beginning. We are now ambassadors of Golden State Baptist College, but most importantly, we are ambassadors of Christ. Let's leave this place lifting up his name and being surrendered to his will. At this time, Trent Bailey, the senior class president, will make his way to the platform for a presentation from this year's graduating class. Trent. On the, oh, hold on. Raise it up. All right. <laughs> on behalf of the class of 2021, I would like to say thank you to Pastor Treber and the staff and to all the family and friends who have traveled to this graduation. Thank you for all the time and money you have invested in this class. Also, to the people of North Valley Baptist Church, it is your faithfulness and sacrifice that has made GSBC possible. And for that, we thank you. To all of you here tonight, only heaven will tell the effect your influence has had on this class. On behalf of this year's graduating class, we would like to thank the college staff. Thank you for your investment in our past four years at GSBC. With all the ups and downs, you have stayed the course and have been great examples to all of us. Today, we want to thank you for the time and effort you have put into this class, from the weekend ministries to the everyday class lessons you teach over and over again. As the years go by, thank you. You think about it. When we got here as freshmen, everything was new and exciting to all of us, and we were ready to do it all. And that whole time, the staff was right beside us with the same enthusiasm and excitement as the students as if as they were experiencing it for the very first time as well. The only catch is they've been doing this for 24 years. And with each year, they keep the same excitement as if it's their first time doing it. And for that, on behalf of this class of 2021, we would like to say thank you. Now comes the gift. This year, the class of 2021 would like to present to the college a square terminal. All right. 
With this device, gone are the days of cash-only payments for activities. We can now look towards the future <laughs> with all forms of digital payments to make the life of both staff and students easier. So with that, Brother Oxendine, we are proud to present the class gift of 2021. Let's stand together, please, and sing like a river glorious. Now, I know it's commencement time, but this is also camp meeting service. Let's sing it together on the verse like a river glorious. It's God's perfect peace. Sing on! Oh. Thank you so much. Great singing. I failed to welcome the people in parking lot one, parking lot two, down the road here on what we call Compassion Lane, back on Ronald Reagan Avenue, and coming around the back to Romans Road, some down Golden State Baptist College Avenue. And we welcome all of you to church tonight, to this graduation. I would be wrong if I did not acknowledge and say thank you to all the employers. The employers of this region have clamored to hire our students each and every year. I guess one reason is they pass the drug test. But employers, we could not have made it without you. We're so very appreciative. You've been good to our kids. You've let them have Sunday off. They've been in the ministry on Saturday. Um, Many of them are working tonight. We realize Wednesday night they work, and many of our, our students are missing tonight. But I'm just so very grateful. Thank you for treating them kindly. Thank you for speaking to them very kindly. Thank you for trying to get the most money for them in a week and a, a hourly paycheck. And we're just so very grateful. All the employers around here, let's give them a big hand, please, tonight. I hope you'll give me the privilege right afterwards tonight of meeting you and personally saying thank you 
I'm in my Bible tonight in the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And if you would be willing to turn there if you have a Bible. And I promise you, uh, I don't need to be long and lengthy tonight. But I do want to give a charge to this graduating class in just a moment. This class has been etched in our mind. We'll never forget the class of 2021. In fact, your picture in the hallway will hang differently than all others because they have different settings, but this one will remind us that there was something called COVID. It's the COVID class. As we think of what these young people have done, they've endured hardness as a good soldier. They have faced setbacks, huge disappointments. We talked about how they had to eat their meals and how they had to wait. And in the wintertime, though this is California, it's cold in the morning. In fact, during pastor's conference, if you were here, you saw it rain and not just rain turn into heavy hail. We've had people out here for church services and college, and sometimes we'll have eight singers on two different uh, levels here and eight over here. And it begins to rain, they just bring the umbrellas out. And they sing through the rain. Ushers usher through the rain. Instrumentals sometimes will get somebody to stand over with them an umbrella. It's cold in the mornings. And we have heaters everywhere. But sometimes when it's so cold, it just doesn't cut it. Yet, these students and our people have been so faithful. God gives us constant visitors every service. And it's amazing what God has done. Let me tell you what this class has done before I read our scripture. This class, they came back in January. This is hard to believe. It's, it's almost impossible. If you would have a college, you know this is it's not possible, but it happened. We did not have one student, freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, not one has quit this semester. Not a one, amen. That's something to amen, folks. That's amazing. Not one. We did not have one student this year financially withdrawn. I wish the government would learn from this. We don't allow them to take the next week unless they pay their bill. $1,000 approximately a month for them earning is a lot of money. We don't want them to graduate and owe anybody any money. That would hamper what they're trying to accomplish when they leave this place. Not one student was financially withdrawn. Not one student quit. Not one student was given the invitation to leave this campus by Brother Oxidine. Not one. Not one student in the female department or the male department, not one has had COVID. They got out of bed every morning and went to class. All the ladies that are left in the dorm after the senior class, all that are freshmen, sophomore, juniors, 100% have paid re-registration for next year. All but two men have paid. And by the way, they, they're they not rebellious. I, I meet with them. I'm their pastor uh, of this church. Not their whole, I'm their home pastor. And we just agreed together, not that they're bad, but they have a vision in their life, and they've been great. Enrollment has already doubled our senior class for next year, plus the present student body. This school, when we had to shut down many of our parents and many of our pastors, and they weren't wrong, they said, we want a school where our kids aren't in tents, but they have buildings to go in, and most of the, all the country, but this place here has been able to be inside, sing without mask. This is the only school that's still intense. So many things have moved in the last week and will this month, and by July, you're going to see some big things changing. We'll be back inside. It's going to be a difficult move for the church because that 3,000 seat auditorium, though it's been all repainted and cleaned and fixed and repaired and new platform. It's just breathtaking inside. Most of our people don't want to go back in. 
They kind of like it out here. That's a conquering spirit. But once they go back and hear the music and sing together inside, they're going to like it again. I want you to know that tonight, young people, you remind me, and several months ago this was impressed upon my heart, and I told you down in the bunker today as we met, I, I told you this, that you're soldiers of Jesus Christ. I admire you so much. Some are preparing to go as soldiers. You're already soldiers, male and female. And every year I have a gift that commemorates the message. And tonight, you've seen it already downstairs. It will sit on your desk or it will sit in your office or it will sit on your bookshelves. And it's a picture of a soldier. Your name is on it. And the verse that's found over here in 2 Timothy 2, verse number 3, is on there. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Tonight we welcome you into the army of the King of Kings. You're soldiers of Jesus Christ, and I know that you'll be great soldiers. Why? You already know what it is to endure hardness. To endure means you stay true when it's tough. To endure means you hold on, you hold up, you stay with it, you don't quit, you don't run, you stay in the fight. The soldiers of yesteryear, and I'm a buff of World War II, I love to study it. It was right, came to the close when I was born, and I'm just so very thankful to know that, uh, that my, par my, my parents' generation, that, that generation knew something about hardness. They knew something about the lack of bread and the lack of food and the lack of a dad at home and dad go to war for a year, two years, three years, four years and be gone. And they knew what it was to have someone come to the door and they could see the military coming and mothers knew and wives knew what it meant. They had to be told that your husband, your children's daddy, your son has died on the battlefield somewhere in this great land, this great world of ours. The Bible says, thou therefore endure, endure. And as you've endured through COVID, don't stop now. Endure hardness. It, this battle's not easy. You ask all the military people that are here tonight that have served or are serving, military is not easy. Battles are not easy. War is not easy. What we have to face is not easy. But thou therefore endure Hardship, stay true. But not only do you stay true, you suffer hardship. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says hardness. You know, the devil kids are gonna fight, he's gonna fight against you. He's not against all these graduates all over the nation that are God haters and agnostics and atheists. And, and, and folks that believe in all types of morality and all morality. But I'll tell you, the devil's against you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring, locky, wild lad, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The devil hates you, but God loves you. The devil's out to destroy you, but God's out to always deliver you, because he is able to deliver thee. We enjoy liberty tonight. We enjoy freedom tonight because someone paid the price. Your grandfathers and our fathers and others paid the price that we might have freedom. Tomorrow's the national day of prayer in America, and yet our president declared today, I don't want the mention of God. The Bible says a fool has said there is no God. There is a God. And he came to this planet Earth, and he who was rich became poor, that you and I through his poverty might be made rich. He left heaven's riches, and he came to be born in a barnyard. And there in that barnyard, his mother, they didn't, they, he wasn't born in the inn. He didn't come with a palatial palace. He came as lowly as could be, and that he lived in tabernacle amongst us. He began his ministry at age 30, and for over three, three years, he served, and he healed the sick and he raised the dead, and he had time for people, and they said, get those little kids away from him. And they said, oh, you suffer. You allow those little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. 
He saw people with tears and he saw people with heartaches and he saw people that had a lunatic son and a demon possessed son. He stopped in Mark 5 and saw the maniac of Gadara, Gadara and, he, and they tried to tame him and they chained him to the tombs and we have a world that's chained to the tombs and the graveyard is sin tonight. But oh Jesus had compassion and it won him and he cast out those demons and then he was found sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. Oh, we live in a tough day today, a day where government wants to control your life, my life, how we walk, how we talk, how we dress, everything about us, whether we are not believing vaccination or not, but government believes in all that stuff. And I'm gonna tell you this tonight, you're gonna have to endure some hardness. Our missionaries on the field tonight are enduring hardness. They suffer hardship. You may be in a city where the government works against you. When I came here, Miss Treber, almost 46 years ago, this city, basically, we had the key to the city. Oh, our church, we didn't own anything. We didn't own a building. We have the property on the other, pro the, uh, the buildings on the other property now that we began to buy over there and build over there. We didn't own anything, but God began to give us some things. And you know, there was a day that I could call anybody at the city they didn't have cell phones, but I could call directly to their office and I could say we would like this to be done and it would be done. But even here, and I know officials are undoubtedly in Santa Clara watching tonight, this church is the most important thing in the city of Santa Clara, more important than city government. This church is the church that's gonna help preserve our city, but it's a whole different, a whole different world now today. They have compassion on everything but the things of Christ. And I want to tell you something. Though they may not want us, we want them. I pray for our mayor. I pray for our city council. I pray for our health director. I pray for the attorneys that I had to sit in Zoom meetings so many times this past year and look at them face to face and they looked at me and our attorneys and their attorneys and the lawsuits we were in with our county. I had to see them and know that I love those people. I pray for them daily. And an amazing thing I've told our church, I was one day in an impasse with them with some of our pastors. After an hour, I said, we're to get nowhere. Nothing's happening. We're going in circles and we're not going to achieve anything today. Let's have a word of prayer. And I started praying. I always pray before and after a meeting. I started praying. And in the middle of it, I got thinking, they're not even saved. And I know they watch and they might be watching now. And they know I love them. And after I got done praying, I felt so ashamed because I didn't even ask them. Not ashamed of the Lord, but I thought, I don't want to be rude to them and just barge on in. The next meeting we were having our meeting and the lawyers were there for our side as well. And they said to our attorneys, now pastor always begins in prayer. Let's have prayer, pastor, go ahead. God did that. We're not on the same page yet, but I want you to know, they know there's a pastor in the Silicon Valley and a church that loves them and wants them to come to Jesus Christ. I'm gonna be their pastor one day. You watch, I promise you that. The Bible says you suffer hardship. It may be your city uh, officials are going to try to outlaw you young people. Don't get mad at those city officials. The apostle Paul did not. Jesus did not. But instead, God had a will and God had a plan and God may just want like Paul and Silas and God may just like want like Peter in chapter 12. God may want to open the jail cell at night and give you an outlet to leave. God is able. I said, first of all, let's stay true. Endure and suffer hardships when your friends don't like you. And God forbid, but your classmates may turn on you. And there's problems and sorrows with your family. And your whole world feels like it's turned upside down and it will happen. If you don't believe that, ask your grandparents. And ask your parents that are here tonight how life is not always easy. Man that's born of woman, Job says his days are few and full of trials as sparks fly upward. But oh, I tell you what, I can sing. Sweeter gets the journey every day. Serving Jesus really pays. I get happy in this heavenly way. Oh, sweeter gets the journey every day. We're one day nearer home. As shadows of the light descend, we're one day less to roam. As evening twilight colors blend. Oh, I tell you what, we're nearing the shore. Keep your eye on that eastern gate. Jesus is coming again. Thirdly, and I'll close tonight. I want you to know 
that a soldier is a soldier. Once a soldier, you're always a soldier. <laughs> what do soldiers do? Well, they wear the uniform. They look the part, high and tight, if you know what that statement is, fellows, with the haircut. You know, they always look like a soldier. You can just tell. You can tell by the way they look. You can tell by the way they stand. You can tell by the way they walk. You can tell by the way, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir, that's it, no. Oh. I have so many times people say, were you in the military? No, ma'am. <laughs> you sure? Yes, ma'am. Are you sure? You're really sure? Yes, I I'm positive. Yes, ma'am. You know, tonight, soldiers fight. You're going to have to defend some things. You're going to have to defend this old book. Jude 3 says, Brethren, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, the historic doctrines of the faith, that this is God, King James, preserved word of God. You're going to have to fight for the New Testament local church that Jesus gave his life for. This is not a club. This is a church, a called out assembly. I want you to know tonight that when the world doesn't want the church, that's when the world needs the church. I want you to know that tonight Jesus gave his life for the church. So don't try to don't try to, to reduce the church. Don't be getting rid of Sunday school. Don't be getting rid of Sunday morning. Don't get rid of Sunday night. Don't get rid of Sunday Wednesday night. Uh, the Bible says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching and he is coming again, let's stay in church. All these tents haven't been bad. It's where God put us. It's like the children of God in the wilderness. That's where God had them. And instead of murmuring and complaining, I'll tell you what, I thank God for this experience. I pastored for so many years. I pastored this church when we were outside in a tent for two years. I pastored in little buildings that were so hot with no air conditioning, really no air windows to get the air out and the heat out. I pastored this church in the gymnasium. I pastored this church when it's been a building under construction and we met inside. I pastored all over this place on this property, the other property. But I tell you what, I'm glad in my lifetime God gave me the privilege during COVID to preach from the stadium. We love the stadium. I love it. I love to see people walk forward and get saved as they come to the church house. I love to see that we've had men called to preach and we've had people follow the Lord and believers' baptism from the stadium. God's done big things. I love hearing the singing from the stadium. I love preaching from the stadium. I, I, I love the fact that the world is watching what God is doing here and I want to say he is still on the throne. So what can be wrong? It's well we with my soul. Yes, it's been hard for, and yes, God's people had to endure, but they did so without complaining. We're soldiers of Jesus Christ. Okay, stay when you're Christian homes. Keep it Christian. Don't compromise it. A song was written just a few months right before President Lincoln was assassinated. They were planning in England particularly to use this song on a Monday, they called all schools off and work off. And the children would go to the streets, meeting at, first of all, their church houses. And they would march with banners and with flags in a big Sunday school rally on a Monday. 1864 was the year President Lincoln was our president. The night before, a music director from one of the churches said, I, I don't have a good song for those kids to sing. I think I need a better song. They'll be marching down these streets and waving the flag. What song could I write? That night he wrote it. The next morning they gathered together and he said to the children, as we march from all these churches down the streets of our city, acknowledging Jesus Christ and bearing the flag of our country, and the flag and the Bible as we walk on the streets. I wrote you this song. The song in 1864 was Onward, Christian Soldiers, Marching as to War, With the Cross of Jesus Going On Before. Christ the Royal Master leads against the foe, Forward into battle, see his banner go. Onward, Christian Soldiers, Marching as to War, With the Cross of Jesus, 
going on before. There were six stanzas. Our hymn book has four. The last stanza said this. Onward then, ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in this solemn song, triumph song. Glory, laud, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, men and angels sang. Oh, may I say tonight, we're in a battle. This is not a recreation field. It's a battlefield, brother. God's not looking for soft soldiers. God's not looking for compromisers. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? Yes, I must fight if I should win. I close tonight with World War II. I love studying World War II. That great generation of people had such fiber in America. They were so poor, but they believed in freedom. And our boys and ladies went off to war across the sea. It was not going well at all in the year 1940 for France and for that matter, all of Europe. England was under siege. Church houses were being bombed. Residential homes were being bombed. The beautiful buildings were laying in rubble in London. And in France, it was plummeted. It was just an awful sight. France was quickly falling. A bald-headed, stocky guy who at one time was a liberal, but he became a, a, a man that believed in God and a man that believed in righteousness. His name was Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill went before the House of Commons. He gave three different speeches that year that have gone down in history as three of the most incredible speeches given by any leader. The date was June the 4th, 1940. He said to his people, as he sought to rally the British people to fight against the Axis powers as they were part of the Allied forces. He came with a passion and a voice of urgency that freedom was about ready to be lost entirely worldwide. Hitler and Mussolini, who by the way, just a few years later died just days apart as one was hung and the other Hitler committed suicide. And Stalin, the rest of the crowd, they were fighting. He said to Parliament that day, even though large tracts of Europe have fallen into the grips of the Gestapo and the odious apparatus of Nazi rule, we shall not fail we shall not quit. We will go on to the end, he cried out that day. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and in the oceans and with growing confidence and growing strength, we shall fight in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields. We shall fight in the streets. We shall fight in the hills, but we shall never surrender. And even if, which I do not for a moment believe, the island or a large part of it were subjugated to starving, then our empire beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on this struggle until in God's good time the new world with all its power and might steps forth to rescue the liberation of the old. As he wrote that that day, and as he spoke that that day, it began to rally the people. And by the way, it turned worse before it turned better. But he believed his country could be saved. We're seeing in the last few months our country, we're legalizing everything. We're putting people in cabinet positions that were men and now they're women and vice versa. We believe that every type of 
filthy sin that God calls sin and abomination is now right and correct. The church is an obstacle. We believe that we can cohabit with socialism and communism and Marxism. They only want to cut your throat out, according to the man that died a few years ago in our streets of America, who was the head of the Communist Party of the United States. He said, I live for the day that we will take the guts of, and he said it in our country, the guts of the politicians and strangle every preacher in America. I want you to know, friend, today we're looking for soldiers. And God bless you students. You passed the test. You're in the army now. Thank God for you tonight. And tonight, in just a moment, we'll stand and give an invitation. You see, this is graduation. Oh, as Pastor Everson said, this is midweek service. And we do it all the time. And we're going to beg you to come to know Christ as your personal Savior. Would you come tonight? A man could show a man how to be saved. A woman could show a woman how to be saved. I heard of a man, a very successful man, and his wife this past week, after all this success in their life, but they have nothing without Christ, are beginning to look up and say, I need Christ. I heard the testimony today of a woman who was being raised by an atheistic father who went to Sunday school at the great Canton Baptist Church about 50 years ago and got saved, and that father who was an atheist became a Christian. May I say this today, you're not ready to live till you're ready to die, and you're not ready to die till you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. For it's appointed that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Do you know Christ tonight? I'm going to plead with you to come to know Christ. You're here as a parent or a grandparent or an employer or someone from this community or even a member of this church. You know not Christ. May this be the night of your salvation. And soldiers, we need some more. Mothers and dads, how about giving us your sons and daughters and to get them ready to go to mission fields around the world as some of these will be on the road this summer getting ready to go to the mission field and some will enter the ministry next week and get in the ministry this summer. Let's stand together, please. Oh, how we need soldiers. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Graduates, we need soldiers. You've got to be, you must be, you have to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? Oh, yes, I believe you are soldiers. Men and women, you're standing true, you're standing strong. Can't, can't quit now, can't give in now. It's going to get harder. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. You ask your parents, life gets harder the longer you live. But oh, I tell you what, as you near the shore, it's wonderful to serve the King of Kings. It's not in vain. Would you come? Mothers and dads, if you feel like you would like to come and pray with your son or daughter, you can. You don't have to. You don't have to. Whatever you feel led, the Spirit of God might lead you. Thank God for these kids. Thank God for these students. They love God. They love you. I tell you, they love their pastors. They love their churches. They love their homes. God bless you, parents. Grandparents, God bless you, sweet grandparents. What a joy to have grandchildren. Keep coming. If you don't feel like kneeling or cannot, just stand with your students. You can stand together. That'd be okay. We're almost finished tonight. As you pray, we'll have Pastor Post. He's going to come from New Brunswick, Canada. He has a graduate here, he and his wife tonight. They've already had kids graduate. He's going to pray God's blessing on this institution and on these students. And Pastor, 
we want you to come to this microphone and witness what it is to be right on up here. Let me get this microphone. You come on up, if you will, please. Thank you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the message that we heard thank you lord for each graduate father and our hearts are full tonight to see and to witness lord what you've done here and what you're doing here thank you for golden state baptist college north valley baptist church thank you for pastor trever thank you for lord all the teachers the professors assistant pastors everyone's been such a blessing lord to our kids and so many young people lord who have prepared here and Lord, I pray that as the message was preached, Lord, that you'll help us, Lord, to be good soldiers, each and every one of us, to be faithful, Lord, to you and to serve you for years to come. Each and every graduate, Lord, bless them, bless their ministry in the future and their families, Lord, and use them. And as I said, Lord, earlier, our hearts are full tonight and we want to take this, Lord, what we've received from you tonight and the testimony tonight and use that for you and for the your glory and for the gospel and we thank you for it and give you all the praise and we thank you lord in jesus name amen hey man you may be seated in about five minutes we'll be on our way and i think we've lost some lights over here in that tent number seven if you know how to turn those on someone that would be great we have a gift tonight our ushers are coming for our graduates and uh, ladies i hope that you're okay with this as well it shows a picture of a soldier and your soldierettes tonight, we're proud of you. You know, every home needs a good wife and a good mother. And uh, it, you're going to have to war a good battle. And I pray that God will let you know your names are on there personally, so make sure we get the right name to the right person. And I want to thank you so much for coming tonight. When those uh, plaques are out for them, and I believe Brother Ox and I said we have a box for you to take with you tonight, you can box it as you go home. I want you to pray for our tour groups. We have one that leaves tomorrow morning. They assemble at 3 a.m. with Brother Bertram, leave about 3.30 a.m. You pray for their safety. They'll be in Nebraska by Sunday. And so you pray for them, if you will. We have a group that will start on Friday night. They'll leave out tomorrow, and they preach in Northern California, then on Sunday up in Oregon, and be making their way through those northern states and Midwest, mid, mid, uh, 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 Northwest states. So you pray for them. We have a group, a Spanish group going out singing in another few weeks, and we're excited about that group as well. From the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. You parents, really, what you allowed your young people to do to come to a place in tents, I imagine that had to be very difficult. We know it was difficult for many parents. But I thank God for you. I can't think of, I asked the faculty, can you think of anything where we were disappointed with these students? Not a thing. They've been such a delight. It's been such an easy, I think as far as I'm concerned, the easiest semester. I know I referred to Brother Oxidine as well, Dean of Students. The easiest semester ever. It's just like, that's the rule, we'll just obey the rule. I'm certain they didn't like all the rules. I don't like them all, but they obeyed it. I appreciate you. For our graduates tonight, your immediate family, which includes, of course, grandparents, and there's a reception over here in the courtyard, the first floor of the dining hall, perhaps the second as well. Tonight, I want to say thank you for coming. There's the alma mater that's in our program tonight, and I hope you have a program, and we'll sing just a stanza or two. Brother Martinez, if you'll help us, what page it's on, please. Page number three, please. Page, page number, number three. three. Page three. And of course, out of respect to this great hymn, let's stand together, sing on that first stanza. From these halls of
or three from these halls. From these halls we cherish memories fill our hearts. And we want to thank thee, Lord, for all thou art. We will go on serving till thy face church family we always receive an offering on Wednesday we will not do that tonight not that it's not needed but you can read some announcements in the bulletin you have that we gave you as a church bulletin tonight we had another sizable gift for the student scholarship dat fund so we have two Wednesday nights left and we will have that reduced to nothing real quickly in the next two weeks and we thank God for all the gifts I thank God for the huge gifts that were given to the college this year from our church family. One day a family gave 200,000, the next day they gave another 200,000 just to sustain the college. To that family, and I'm certain they're here tonight, one of our members in our church family that gave a couple hundred thousand on top of that. Uh, tonight is fruit to your account, and I thank you. To our church family, we'll be short $300,000 this semester and this summer, and to our church family also, the Christian school will be short 200,000. And so this summer, we're looking for those gifts of about $500,000. Graduates, I love you so much. I want you to stay in touch with us. We will definitely miss you, but we're so very proud of you. Our graduates leave first tonight. Congratulations and welcome to the alumni family of Golden State Baptist College. Give them a big hand. As you leave tonight after the faculty, we want to remind you as they play this song, please follow the security and parking lot attendants as people are coming. We have these rooms filled with the children's programs tonight, and they'll be dispersed just momentarily, so people will be everywhere. There's pictures, more lights to come on momentarily. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>